everything in your business that has a transaction should have a contract. Mm -hmm. So it's trademarks, it's contracts, it's, you know, it's a whole thing that you wanna make sure you do to protect your small, medium, big business. What up, though, Black Friday family? Welcome back to another installment of the Black Fridays podcast. Of course, I have another special guest with us here today. But before we get into that, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all major streaming platforms, and go check out a previous episode as well. All right, now that we got that out the way, I have somebody in here who is a serial entrepreneur, a creative themselves, and also a lawyer who actually has a, a law degree, Miss Beverly Bill Jr. How are you? Yes, I am a lawyer with a lot of <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Um, I was so excited that you asked me to be on the podcast. Very flattered. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Absolutely. Now, before we get into anything else, I got to ask you, your name is legally Beverly Bill Jr. So I got to know the story. It could be much more simpler than I'm thinking, but I got to know the story behind what was the motivation okay. of you being a junior. The entire time my mom was pregnant, she thought she was having a boy. Mm -hmm. uh, my name was supposed to be Reggie, Reggie Reginald Devon Beal, after my father. Mm -hmm. um, and the day she had me, they were like, oh, it's a girl. She was like, well, I don't have any girl names picked out. I guess I'm just going to name her after me. And uh, my grandma told her to add the junior, and there I am. And for like my first three months, I wore like boy clothes, boy baby clothes. Because that's what they had. That's all she got in the baby shop. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's how the junior came about. Gotcha. Yes. So they didn't double check to make sure it was a boy. They just like, I guess just no matter what, back we had in the boy. day, maybe it was no real way to tell. Okay. But yeah, everyone told her she was having a boy. Okay. Yeah. And boom. Boom. You know, she had the junior. girliest girl she could she ever can. have. Yeah, that's what happened. Legit, and she's very girly as well. No, she's okay. a tomboy, uh -huh. like really big in sports, captain of all the sports team, and mm -hmm. then there's me, who like don't even want to sweat. Yeah. So, yeah, very yeah. She got exactly what she didn't want. I think. Got you. Now does she go by <laughs> Beverly Bill Senior? Um, they, they call her Bev Senior and call me Bev Junior. Got you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. <laughs> so I would love to be able to know you actually have your own law firm and, and practice, and would love to know more about that and how that came about and the services you offer. Um, I always say like I was forced to become an entrepreneur. This was not my goal at mm -hmm. all. Um, I think some people make the plan to be an entrepreneur. I made the plan to like work for a firm or mm -hmm. work for a company. Um, and I just wasn't getting the positions I applied for or it just wasn't enough money. I mean, I was like drowning in student loans. Mm -hmm. um, so I was living in New York and I actually had a position I really liked. It was at a media company and um, I was working with like Pepsi and uh, p and G. So like really big companies. I was working with influencers and I really liked the job. Um, my department got audited and they let me go. So <laughs> I took it really personal. I was the youngest. I was the only woman. I was the only black person on the team. Um, so yeah, I took it kind of personal. Left New York and then I moved to DC and I, I kept getting just like, I don't know, little weird positions that I just wasn't feeling. And I know people love DC and I, I this is no shade to DC, but when mm -hmm. I moved to DC, I did not have like the best time. Mm -hmm. um, it was really hard to make friends. Mm -hmm. No shade to DC, but I feel like if you don't go to Howard, if you're not in <laughs> politics, <laughs> you're, not they, in the you're not, no, they don't want to get to know you. They don't want to know your name. Um, so yeah, I feel like I was in DC just kind of working and I decided to start my own law firm when I lived in DC. It was mm -hmm. me, my dog in my loft. And boom, that's how my law firm came about. But um, what I practice is intellectual property. Mm -hmm. And I I honestly, I don't even know how, how I wanted to start doing that. I mean, my first job out of law school, my mentor gave me a job and um, he did a little business law. It was some sports entertainment and then it was a divorce law firm. So it was kind of 
everything in one. So mm. I did have some intellectual property experience, but between finishing law school, like passing the bar and, and, and doing all this other stuff, I started influencing in between. So mm -hmm. um, I had a really big community from influencing. So I kind of noticed all my influencer colleagues, like they're like, I have no idea what any of these contracts are. So I found myself like, okay, well, I can look it over for you. And mm -hmm. when I announced that I was gonna do my law firm, everybody was like, great, sent me all their stuff, was like trademark my name mm -hmm. and it kind of started from there and it's it's been doing well. I started in 2019. Um, I'm still going. God willing, I'm mm -hmm. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how that happened. <laughs> and you mentioned one important thing there in terms of uh, you practicing the space of intellectual property and then also trademarking, which is a, a big thing for any small business, creative yes. businesses in general, and something that I think a lot of people may not fully understand, including myself. So could you kind of mm -hmm. break down what exactly is a trademark and why would you have to file for something like that? So a trademark is a way to protect your brand. Um, and I, I find myself having to explain that a lot more lately because people are like, well, I have this great idea or I have this great method. And honestly, that's not really what a trademark can protect. It really just protects a brand name or a tagline or you can even trademark a sound um, or a logo. So um, yeah, trademark is you have, what, what's the name of your business? So let's go with Black Fridays. Black Fridays, okay. Um, we trademark Black Fridays. We can trademark Black Fridays logo. We could trademark Black Fridays with Denzel, if that's your taglines. Mm -hmm. All those things can be trademarked. Um, you're gonna submit to the USPTO. I think that's United States. Patent and Trademark Office. That's okay. what that stands okay. for. Um, you file with them and you just go through the process. Honestly, the process has been getting longer and longer. And I think that's just because more and more people are starting to trademark. Mm -hmm. um, so the process is actually getting longer and harder. Um, more people are getting denied than ever lately. And I think it's just, it's getting saturated, but I don't think that should deter people. Mm -hmm. You want to own it. Um, yes, because it brings more value to your business. And for people who maybe want to exit their business, it just adds more value, you know, at the, for that valuation when you want to sell it because you own everything in your business. And, you know, you're not worried about anyone's copying the name or, mm. you know, anything like that. So trademarking is just a small part of, well, it's a big part of the small business. Mm -hmm. um, but on top of trademarking and owning your brand name you also want to own all the contents in your company right mm -hmm. so that's just making sure you have contracts for everything you have contracts for your vendors or independent contractors who's doing your photos who's doing your videos and you have, have everything in your business that has a transaction should have a contract mm -hmm. so it's trademarks it's contracts it's you know it's a whole thing that you want to make sure you do to protect your small medium big business so when yeah. you register your business as a business entity LLC incorporated whatever yeah. that does not give you automatic rights to a trademark it does not a LLC all a LLC is doing is letting the IRS know you got to owe the money. That's all the <laughs> LLC is. You're letting the IRS know that, hey, I'm starting a business and soon I'm going to have to owe you money. I, I got you. That's literally all the LLC does. Right. Um, it will help you own that name in your state. Mm. But even with that, if someone had a trademark, because a trademark is, uh, is national, national protection, okay. um, it, that's not really what an LLC is for. And a lot of people mm. say, oh, well, I bought it on Laura.gov. You know, that's the Michigan of LLC. Course, yeah. Um, that's my name. It is not. Mm -hmm. It is not your name. Um, so yeah, you have to take it a step further and get it trademarked. Um, but in that same breath, I, I try to let people know everything does not need to be trademarked. Like I, I, my law firm name, Law Office of Beverly Bill. I don't need to trademark that. Right. Could I? Absolutely. But right. I say you trademark a business where your brand is the focus. Mm. My services is the focus. And if I tr change my name to White Table Law Service tomorrow, I'm not going to lose my clients. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they're still going to come. So not everything needs to be trademarked. I know people are just like going crazy about trademarking things right now. But yeah. if you go to the right attorney, like myself, they will tell you 
you know, you don't have to trademark this. They they should give you that legal advice. Like if you want to, great, but this is not something you have to trademark. It's not going to ruin your business. Um, and honestly, if you're not planning to use your business with the brand in mind, like the brand mm-hmm. is the forefront, you're, I, I'm trying to think of someone like a Kate Spade or something like mm-hmm. her, that's a brand focused business. Does she have products? Yes. But it's, if you take that Kate Spade off of it, I don't know if somebody would buy it, you right. know? So you got to think about that when it comes to trademarks. And if any attorney is just saying, oh yeah, we could do it. I would like dig deeper into it because they might just want you to pay them some money. Got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one more question for you before we have some fun real quick. Okay. I would like to know, is there a way to trademark something internationally? Because you said that a trademark in the U.S. Mm-hmm. is national. But can you do like one swoop of and it's all international? Or do you have to trademark in different countries? You have to trademark in different countries. Okay. So it can get extremely expensive. Um as some companies that I have worked with, they have trademarked in the UK, China, and the US. It's really hard to get a Chinese trademark. Mm-hmm. Um, like we have a lot of trademarks. I feel like they have 10 times the amount of trademarks we have. But people tr- tend to try to do China because they're usually the copycat. Yeah. So um, you do and you can definitely get the trademark in all those different countries, especially if you plan to you know, not just expand because obviously people from out of country can buy your products or service, but if you want to be like headquartered and, and known in that country, you are going to have to get the trademark in every mm. single country. And honestly, I don't even, I don't know that every country even has a trademark okay. service or I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm US based. Got you. So um, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought about this patent yeah. versus trademark. What's the difference? Okay. So a patent is going to be like an actual invention. Mm-hmm. Um, so something that you put together, it's pieces, it's parts. Um, but at the same time, it can also like be a method that you put together, which is getting really hard because it's like, no one is really reinventing the wheel at this point, you know, unless it's just something that's just pushing us like far, you know, some type of technology that's like taking us to the next level. But honestly, everything has been thought of as of right now until I I don't know, I guess we're flying in cars or something, but Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to get patents like that through. But if you have like made an invention, like, this microphone and you decided to add something into it to make the the sound better or whatever it is, mm. that is something that you can patent. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, makes me think about NVIDIA and like their chips and, and, uh, Intel as well. Yep. And like, they got those forever. How long do those things usually last? Like, so patents it's like and trademarks? you, I, now I don't do patents and honestly, you actually have to go to law school longer Okay. to uh, have like this certification in patents, but you can be an attorney and do patents, but there are such things as patent attorneys. Mm-hmm. Um, and you buy the patent and you can have it and it lasts for so long and then you have to renew it or then you'll hear like infomercials and they'll be like patent pending. So yeah. they put their application in, but they may have not actually got it registered yet. So I don't know the exact amount of years that a patent is active, but you do have to keep renewing it. And if mm. you don't, people do like swoop in and try to reinvent it and then patent it themselves. Oh, Cause that made me think about the shoes that be coming yeah. over from yeah, yeah other countries. And then like, that's the Jordan silhouette, but they ain't really, they ain't Michael Jordan on yeah. there. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. And what about trademarks? Do they last for a finite amount uh, of time? So too? trademarks, you have to get those uh, renewed every seven to 10 years also. So okay. that is something else that if you don't, use it you lose it Mm. kind of sort of um and when you do renew it you have to show them like hey i am still using it you know you do have to show an active website actively Mm. still in commerce you're actively still serving your clients so yep everything has to be renewed i mean and they just want more fees so it makes sense Mm. they're not just gonna let you have it forever and not pay them because then they will never let your trademark go through because they're gonna never get any more money from you so (laughs) makes sense yeah makes sense all Mm -hmm. right so uh, i promise you we're gonna have some fun so i want to introduce you to my favorite part of black fridays which is freestyle fridays so So, 
<laughs> I'm not gonna have to rap battle or nothing. I mean, we can. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a freestyle. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we can just do rapid fire questions. They all okay. about you, and okay. I just ask that you answer each one and answer honestly. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's see. First one. What's your most random job that you ever had? Mm, I worked at a Metro PCS. Um, I will not disclose a location, but <laughs> it got robbed all the time. Okay. It was in Detroit, obviously. I mean, I, I love my city. Let's be clear. Um, it got robbed all the time. Mm. And then my mom finally made me quit because she's like, this is getting ridiculous. And it was never like, like, I, well, I don't know. It, it was never like, okay. it was dangerous, Help. but you know, like, it wasn't <laughs> like guns drawn and like yeah. shootouts. Wait, wait, wait. It was just wait, wait, wait. Help me. I just want to understand the psychology. <laughs> it was of literally Robert. like, it was like twice it was the same guy. And uh -huh. he would just come in there and be like, Slide give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> and one time I was on break, so I was like in the back, so I didn't even see anything. But yeah. the other time, we all just kind of stood there and was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and just let him come in. But um, yeah, she was like, you know what? I think it's going to escalate. So just quit. Okay. But um, I've actually had like a lot of little jobs. Like I started working when I was 14. I think mm -hmm. my first job was at CVS Pharmacy. Um, I worked at Metro PCS. I worked at, um, I don't know if y'all remember Say La Vie. Come on like, now. Don't say yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now. So yeah. I, I, you know, I thought I was this stuff um, in high school <laughs> when I worked there. But yeah, I worked plenty of like retail jobs. I was a hostess at Outback for three days. I got fired. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I think between Outback and Metro PCS, those were probably my most odd jobs. Got you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. And you have, you're a serial entrepreneur. You have several different businesses and teeth that you've started over the years. Do mm -hmm. you what what is a favorite business that you enjoy in like the Detroit area that is not your own? Uh so a Detroit business that I love? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I feel like it's so many. Um I have to say lip bar just to start. Like I think what Melissa has done is phenomenal. But honestly, it's like all all the Detroit girls who decide to start a business, I feel like they're thriving. I feel like yeah. Mia is thriving. I feel like um the Harper Ray, the jewelry, I just mm -hmm. feel like whatever Detroit <laughs> girls say they're going to do, it just thrives. Yeah. Um and I mean, I don't know. I, it, I can I say like better me? Like I can't believe there's still a thing. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm just I'm so happy to be back in Detroit. This is the most supported I felt in a very long time. That's and dope. maybe because I'm I'm from here, but I've never felt this type of support. I've lived in New York, D.C., Georgia. And it's nothing like coming back home. It's like everybody's excited mm -hmm. for me to be back here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's so many Detroit businesses. And now that I've moved back, it's a completely different place mm -hmm. now. Um, so I'm still learning about new brands and new businesses here. But um I'm really proud to be back and proud to be from here because I don't know. I just feel like we put a different spin on everything that we do. And I'm right. not saying it just because I'm from here, but we dress better. Like that's we we hustle better. Yeah, like, that's... We're just nicer people too. I, mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, they're like, well, where's the who, where's the friendliest place you ever live? And I'm like, Detroit. It's it's the friendliest place. I don't know what they're talking about, like Southern hospitality. There was the meanest rooted pe people I've ever met when I lived in Georgia. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I, I can't even say, but if if I did have to list, I'm gonna list all the girls here because That's I think what's up. they're doing an amazing job. That's fire. I yeah. agree 100%. So I had a brief period in time where I, fe where I felt like I should have or wanted to go to law school when I was doing my MBA program. I was like, damn, I should have did the dual MBA because <laughs> I went to University of Miami and like oh, they law wow. school. Okay. The yeah, type great of, law school. Yeah, exactly. And they have like entertainment law and like all stuff that I'm mm -hmm. interested in, do a lot of cool stuff. And I want to know for you, what was your favorite part of law school? <laughs> Finishing. <laughs> um, 
So I say like the people who go to law school, interested in law school, they may not want to admit it, but we're super nerdy. Mm -hmm. Like we just, we love reading. We love history, like, you know, those type of things. So honestly though, when I got to law school, all those passions of mine kind of went out the door because it's so neurotic. Like you, just, it's so stressful. So I can't say any part I liked about law school other than finishing because <laughs> I feel like eventually I got back to my passions. Like I used to love reading. Mm. But once I got to law school, I'm like, I'm not reading anything that I don't have to already read out of these, you know, million books that they just gave me to read. So, right. um. <sighs> I met nice friends there. Okay. In in law school, but like the experience, um, I guess it probably just made me more resilient. That's the only thing I can think of, like positive about law school is, um, I had to keep going. That that's literally it. Um, what I learned, I couldn't tell you. It didn't prepare me for anything to mm. be a lawyer, to be honest. <laughs> um, law school didn't prepare me for the bar. Mm. Just nothing. You just go and do it and give them the money. Okay. And then figure <laughs> out how to be an attorney once you actually become an attorney. Right. But, um, I mean, if I could do it over, though, I, I may have done, like, a, a different route and maybe worked a little bit and then okay. went to law school just so I wouldn't have so much of those student loans. Mm. Um, but... My mom kind of gave me a dilemma after college. I told her I wanted to take a year off. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. She was like, oh, that is so great, sweetie. Um, I'm done, though, because you. I've done my part. You're grown. You went to college. So good luck. And I was still <laughs> very broke after college. So um, that threat worked, mm -hmm. and I went straight to law school. Yeah. So um, it was... Not my choice, but <laughs> my finances chose for me. Yeah. And I went straight to law school. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> so I was just kind of scared into going. I, I did want to take a year off and like figure some things out because I actually graduated college a year early. I went to school all year round so I can mm. graduate a year early. Um, I, honestly, I've always been in school. I'm talking about, I don't know, probably before I could walk. I've always been in school. I've always been in summer school. I'm t I've always been a nerd. Yeah. Like I love school. I love learning. And my mom is just really big on education. So uh, when I got to college, it was almost strange to me to have the summer off. So I just took some classes and avoided paying a year of college. So yeah. mm. gotcha. <laughs> and last but not least, let the people know what you got in rotation right now as far as music. Music. Now you're going to embarrass me because <laughs> <laughs> I'm at that age. I don't know any of the rappers' names right okay. now. Um, I may know the beat if it come on. I barely know the words. But um, I still listen to, like, Jill Scott. Okay. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Jilly from Philly. <laughs> it, honestly, anything after 2005, don't <laughs> ask me because I don't know. I'm, like, living out those years and then... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I still listen to Jeezy. I, I mean, okay. I know he got, like, his new stuff out. No yeah. shade to Jeezy. But, yeah, like, but you I'm still listen about, to Doom, Doom, Clap. Doom, Doom, Clap. <laughs> all the dope boys go crazy. Like, I'm still listening <laughs> yeah, to okay. that. So, um, yeah. And, and then, you know what? I'm not a big music person either. I'm mm -hmm. definitely more of a podcast. I love listening to, like, politic news or, okay. like, just current event news. Mm -hmm. Um know the older i'm getting i used to think it was just so made up that like what you're listening to doesn't affect you as a person mm -hmm. i feel like it really does and um i don't know i watch what i consume and like let in yeah. i know that probably sounds like super like philosophical but it really is a thing yeah so i don't know i'm just real cognizant about what i'm letting into my like mind and mm -hmm. my spirit so yeah i'm not real big on music right now that's right unless it's jim scott and jeezy no nah, not even <laughs> but listen <laughs> just 
If it's after 07, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I you gotta you gotta really sell me on it. Okay, yeah. for sure. For sure. Well, shout out to you for participating in Freestyle Fridays. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for engaging in the in the randomness. And I gotta okay. learn more about your creator journey as well. So okay. obviously you do the things, you go to law school and you have your career in that, but then also you had mentioned earlier that you are a creative a creative yourself. So if you could let us know about how do you define your creativity and the, the thing, your art and the things that you work on? And then I, I want to, I, we had a previous conversation I'm going to ask a follow-up question about. Um, I want to first say I don't even consider myself a creative. I think like real creatives, I don't even want to feel like I'm in the same arena because I feel like some people who create content, I'm like, okay, they are this is what creating content is. Yeah. Um, I just sell things. Okay. okay. I'm a saleswoman. I like that. Um, I, I have my own brand. And because of that, if I feel like this is something beneficial to my community, to my culture, I want to put them on that. So mm -hmm. I just feel like if anything, I don't know, maybe I'm more of an educator. Okay. I don't. I maybe from now on I look like yeah maybe I look like a creative I don't think I have a creative bone in my body okay. I think I'm very black and white I think I'm you know I, I'm analytical so mm. I don't know when you say creative to me I'm I'm very flattered but mm. I don't think of me as a creative but um, as far as the influencing stuff goes mm. um, I don't really know what made me try to do it I, I guess I, I saw influencers making money if I can be honest I'm like. Y'all posting on because I was so against Facebook when mm. it came out. Mm. I thought it was insanity, like to like post pictures of yourself mm. and like tell people what you're doing during the day and like put it on the internet. Because for me, it felt like I'm making a website every day. Yeah, I was like, why would y'all want to do that? That sounds ridiculous. Like that's a lot of work mm -hmm. for me. And then I found out people was getting paid to do it. And I was like, all right, cool. Right. Let's do it. Let's let. And I'm gonna do it for real. The moment I decided to be an influencer. I got a professional photographer. Now, mind you, I had a job because mm. being a creative is not cheap. It takes money to make money being yes. a creative. Um, I had a full time job, um, so I was able to invest in it. And um, I, I guess people like what I had to say or at least like what I was wearing. And that's kind of how that happened. And yeah. I guess I became a creative that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean you're you're in the you're in the realm for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm creative adjacent. Okay. Okay. Yes. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So how did you start to work out these brand deals with organizations, companies that you work with? Like did you did they start to seek you out because of what you were putting out there? Did yeah. you seek them out? How, how did that work out? They definitely came to me. Um, what I did, I was like, I'm going to make content that already looks like their content. So why wouldn't they want to work with me? Because mm -hmm. I think that's the thing. Everybody is like, I, I got my own thing. I have my own identity. I got my own style. And, and that's great. But if you want to get paid, you got to have their identity. You got to have their style. So that's why I feel like it almost takes away from really creative people because they don't want to do that. And mm -hmm. I didn't learn that until when I started my law firm and the bulk of my clients turned out to be creatives. And and it was then there I saw like, okay, these people really wanna do their own thing. They hate listening to the brands. Mm -hmm. um, they just wanna be their own individual. They hate any legal stuff. They literally just want to create. Like they, they just have all these ideas and they're so elaborate and all these type of things. And I'm right. like, I got to bring them in and like, okay, well, you can't have that in the background. That's someone else's trademark or mm -hmm. you can't, do, you know what I mean? So um, I think if I was not getting them out of legal trouble, they would hate me. Like when I worked <laughs> at the media company, everyone hated the legal department because mm -hmm. it like stifled their creativity. Their creativity yeah. Yep. So yeah, um, yeah but I, that's how I started working with the brands. I was like, I'm going to make it me, but I'm going to make it them too because that's who I'm trying to, you know, that's who I'm trying to impress. But people try to impress people on the internet instead of the brands. And that's where you go wrong because mm. the people on the internet is not cutting you a check. Mm -hmm. It's the brand. So if you want to make money, maybe shift in that way. But I guess if you're just here to post and post, have a good time. And, right. Yeah. So you saw <laughs> you saw a gap in uh, opportunity to kind of fill that gap. Whereas 
like I see what you're doing. Yes. I I know I can do some stuff that align to that. Let me let let me yeah. start to move in that direction. Yeah. So it was like when I decided to do my law firm, I kind of slowed down on my influencing stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want my clients to feel like we had a conflict of interest. I didn't want us going up for the same campaigns. Um, and then on top of it, I just didn't have the time anymore. So I kind of move my influencing stuff to the background, focus on my law firm or focus on any other business I was working on. Um, but I am starting back to get back on the influencing thing, but it's definitely, I'm trying to be more intentional. I feel like when I first started off, it was a lot of beauty stuff, fashion, all that kind of stuff. And now I'm kind of trying to be more intentional and I would love to be a business influencer, like, mm. or a, I don't want to say finance because that's a, that's a that's a deep word, but like just <laughs> how I manage my money yeah. and how I do run my business. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to rebrand. Um, I don't want to just be twirling in the streets with dresses I'm promoting. Like I, I want it to be something that I'm I feel passionate about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a little shift happening right now. Got you. Yeah. <laughs> and you made a very valid point in terms of creatives and really just wanted to be create, not necessarily always worry about business stuff and things like that. But I had to learn this lesson the hard way in the past because I developed websites for uh, years and still mm -hmm. do. But just the importance of having contracts and paperwork and yes. deadlines and things like that, which everybody doesn't necessarily do. They just want to kind of vibe and do the work. Yes. Can you talk about why it's so <laughs> important to make sure that you have your paperwork in order when it comes to things like that? Well, it's like you want to protect your brand. You want to protect the assets of your brand. And then you want to protect the things that you're creating. Or if anything, you just want to eliminate confusion. Right. Um, and that's what the contracts should be doing. Like the contract should say everything that, you know, everything that's supposed to happen during this transaction. So not just thinking about the legal stuff the contracts does. If anything, you want to put your policies in there. Like, okay, this is what I do. This is what I don't do. This is when I'm going to have it for you. I'm not going to have it for you here. Mm -hmm. Or you can't call me five times, 10 a day. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to put yeah. boundaries. So yes. I tell people like, don't get so intimidated by the contract. You can put your language in here too and mm. how you feel about the whole thing. So it's not just legalese. It's actually... I tell my creatives, it's your feelings too, because they want their feelings in there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's how you feel about the transaction that you can also put into contract. So it doesn't feel so black and white to you. And you can really put in there your boundaries and how you want this transaction to go. So it's very important to have the, the contract. And then in the event something does go south, you want that paper trail going. So, because the first thing, like something goes south that you you want to get money your money back, um, most jurisdictions, they're going to ask, did you send them a demand letter? Um, did you have a contract? Mm -hmm. uh, did you do everything you could before you filed this lawsuit or before you filed this small claims? Um, so just having that paper trail going, it's going to help. It doesn't always solve everything. I'm not going to lie and say contracts just solve every problem because it doesn't. Right. People still do what they want even yep. when they do have contracts, but it definitely helps and give you a bigger dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've had to give him, I, I've had to give money back before, just because I didn't want to be dealt yeah. with the client. I was over the project. I'm like, listen, whatever yeah. else that you owe me, consider a donation because yeah. it's just not worth my time. Yeah, it and it be like that. Yeah, it do. <laughs> it do like yeah, I I know. And what what are some things that, in your experience in working with creatives, and then also you having deals and partnerships yourself that you feel like they get wrong in terms of that whole economy aside from like not necessarily having paperwork or want to do paperwork but what what are some things that they're they're missing in terms of doing business that way they don't read mm. they don't read the contract we, we didn't did all this to get you a contract you don't read it <laughs> it's, it sounds so simple they don't read it it's like mm. you couldn't possibly have read this if you looked at the terms and the thing is um, I even feel like in the last two years, agencies, brands, they have gotten so predatorial. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clear to me that 
it's just a lot of influencers who are not reading it. And I get it. It's not their thing. Mm -hmm. They're not weird like me who love reading contracts. I get it. But if that's the case, maybe you need to hire someone. I mean, yeah. it could be me. It could be it could be anybody. Just yeah. have someone to read it. But I would have preferred to be an attorney so they can kind of break down those terms for you. Yeah. But the that's the biggest thing I see is they don't read it or they be like, yeah, I just I just signed it. You know, I I, I needed the money. You right. know. Yeah. <laughs> like that yeah i don't really care what the term said um i think that is a big thing and then i do feel like a lot of influencers i'm probably gonna get something started with this i feel <laughs> like a lot of influencers are so happy and looking forward to jumping into getting representation mm -hmm. and a lot of these people who want to represent represent influencers are not doing anything mm. like they love to say my team my fact. team my That's team yeah i got a team i got a manager they're not doing anything for Nothing. you yeah they're hopping on a bandwagon that you've already been making money mm -hmm. they're just kind of riding your you're coattails the, you're yeah the lit a literal media company. I, I can tell you it's so many agencies that nowhere in the paperwork they say we're going to get you more work we're going to mm -hmm. get you more campaigns <laughs> yeah. no they literally say we're going to manage your inbox right. so they're really just virtual assistants if you ask me mm -hmm. uh, and like i said i'm sure you might get some feedback. <laughs> but um, I feel like they're so quick to kind of hop in those relationships and don't negotiate. I'm keeping this and don't negotiate the terms like you need to speak up and say, well, guess what? You're only going to eat what you kill. Right. You're not going to get cut of of campaigns that were already coming to me before I even signed this deal with you. If you bring me some deals, yes, you can get a cut of that. But like I said, <clears throat> I think they get so excited to say they have a team. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to answer emails anymore. They don't have to do the negotiations anymore. And they just want to get that off of their plate. And I guess I get that too. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's the best business move, but I don't know. If it's your, your mental health, um, go for it. But I think that's the biggest thing is not reading these contracts and then hopping in to bring someone in to represent you and they're not really doing anything exactly yeah exactly predatory like you said it's very predatory yes. yeah so what is um i want to do a case study in terms of okay. we, we <laughs> want to do a case study in terms of trademark and protecting your stuff and <laughs> putting yourself in position yes. to get bigger bags or or maximize your bag so mm -hmm. to speak so the influencer who created the term very demure or mm -hmm. demure i forget exactly how the yeah. saying goes but that person was online not too long after that whole thing took off and had a life of his own essentially crying and saying like yeah. i didn't get a chance to trademark it somebody trademarked yeah. it and beat me to the punch and things like that what's what's your take on that situation and what that creator could have done or could still do in yes. order to maximize their their bag and their opportunities so first of all, when you're filing a trademark, you have two options. You have a 1A and a 1B application that you use. 1A is already in commerce. That means you have a brand, you have a website, you have marketing, um, you have clients, the clients know you, you have consumers. And then the other one is intent to use. So with the intent to use, you don't have anything. You just have the brand name. This is what I want to use. The USPTO will let you file now and then give you six months to get this business started. Okay. This random person who filed his trademark in this other person's name, he filed a 1B. Mm -hmm. So in six months, he's going to have to prove what are you using very demure, very mindful for. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe he filed under like entertainment services or something mm -hmm. like that. So that random person is going to have to put something together that, hey, this is my business. This is how people know me. But the original influencer, he still has more than enough time to defeat this application. Mm -hmm. He, This person just submitted. He filed under 1B. You can come in and dispute someone's, at, uh, I'm about to say education, dispute someone's application. Yep. So he still has the opportunity to take it back from him and prove that I'm the original owner of this trademark. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with making viral content and it going out and it exploding, I know it sounds like really proactive, but like if you know, I, I don't know, I guess you don't know, but right. if you're going around saying something and you want it to catch on, mm. I, I guess you better file the trademark before mm. it goes crazy. Um, I, it's been plenty of influencer who sayings or taglines 
go viral and mm. then it gets so big that the trademark will tell them you can't own this it's in, too in much of a, a, a yeah, yeah like it's like saying tissue paper now so you, right. you can't own it and yeah. that does happen so it's like if you have a huge following or even if you don't like if you have a tagline and it's your goal to make this tagline viral you better go ahead and trademark it and you have the option to do a 1b if you don't have anything now but you go around saying it put that 1b application in let it explode and then boom you create mm -hmm. your business around it yeah but um but you really got to be in that mindset yeah, to yeah, do you something do. like that and i i think a lot of creatives are just not they mm -hmm. don't think it's gonna do that they don't think about the legal side they just think about being super creative mm -hmm. this particular influencer i think he got a lot more creative stuff in him mm -hmm. I, I don't think this is going to be the last we've heard of him mm -hmm. um but he still has plenty of time to take that trademark okay. back um i think he just doesn't know that i'm, I'm sure some law firm has already hook lined and secreted him in mm -hmm. and they're already I hope so, working on getting that back from him. But yeah, just because that person put that application in, that's just them submitting application. So submitting an application and making it all the way to registration it's is a whole, whole other okay. thing. So he still has like a year and a half to go mm. to see if this application can actually be his. So um, was it sneaky? Yes. It happens every day. Yeah. I know plenty of people who go behind people and trademark their name. And sometimes they'll go to me like, oh, I'll sell it to you. Like this, this I was gonna happens. say that'd be a fire it's, business yeah, idea for, a, for, for, for you scammers. That's a, yeah, it's a great business so, idea. So um, yeah, you just, you have to believe in whatever you're doing right away and mm -hmm. do the paperwork and yeah. He got caught slipping. Now. Yeah. yeah. Is that the strategy behind using Detroit versus everybody where when they, they trademarked the everybody versus everybody part yeah. instead of see, whatever now, comes before yeah, that. Yeah, that one was like way more intricate because mm -hmm. it's like technically he did own Detroit versus everybody, but mm -hmm. he didn't own New York versus everybody yeah. and Ohio versus everybody. So right. it was a really slippery slope. Mm -hmm. I didn't finish that um, to see what ended up happening, but I do know that maybe it was some things that he was able to shut down, but most of it he was not going to be able to because i think that verse everybody thing that's just a little bit too public that they call it um uh, not merely descriptive but it, it's in that realm that it's just too common okay um and we can't allow you to own it because that's just too common of a term mm -hmm. so i don't know what end up happening with that but like in that case that's something just a little bit more intricate um just because yes he did own the detroit verse everybody but he can't technically stop everyone else from, you know, like he maybe can stop a Michigan versus everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, something that is a little bit more similar to yeah. his, but like Puerto Rico versus everybody is yeah. going to be really hard to right. say you came up with this. So um, I really hope he got his what he needed <laughs> I, hope, I hope so too yeah cause, he yeah because you know it's like yeah because yeah. it, it blew up and you got yeah, a lot of copycats out there crazy yeah yeah and on top of that trademark i'm sure he had so many people just throwing it on a t-shirt and yes. that is infringement so mm -hmm. i hope he's at you know at least collecting on that all the infringement that happened after he came out with it mm -hmm. um because for whatever reason when people start a business the first thing they do is put it on a t-shirt <laughs> like if you go in the if you go into the USPTO and do a search, almost every business in there is for t-shirts. Yeah. So it's like the the thing people what they put on a t-shirt is a real business. So yeah. yeah. So I have a I want to for all my podcast creators out there, similar to myself. Yes. How do you protect, or what should you consider protecting when it comes to podcasting? Because we know this space is very new, yes. very young. So it's just like, what should you? When should you start considering? And what do you should what should you consider in terms of protecting your IP? I definitely say the name of the podcast because that is like how people find you all and identify you all. And podcast is very new, like just a couple of years ago, when you're picking a class in the USPTO, podcast wasn't even in any of the classes. So they yeah. had to figure out where to put it and yep. where to have it available because it wasn't a thing, you know, a couple of years ago. So um, I feel like podcasts are just going crazy that um, 
what's the call her daddy name? Like she just got 20 million for yeah. her, pot, like yep. crazy money. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's all in the branding. Um, she's trademarked nearly everything in that realm of her podcast. So if anything, like just starting with the name, because I feel like podcast turns into merch. It turns mm -hmm. into, it, it could be so many other things that you can do from you know after leaving that podcast I, I think because podcast is such like a broadcasting things it can just stretch like it can just go so far yeah um so i say trademarking the name at least um whatever your you know your podcast name is um and start in there because you just don't know what it'll turn into it could turn into some products mm -hmm. you just don't know i don't i know you might want to stand a candle business <laughs> i don't know but um at least start there but the thing is like us talking this isn't really something you trademark right okay. so this i don't know maybe it can be a copywriting thing because the, the thing with like copywriting it's like once you turn the power on or you you turn the recorder on you're the copyright owner of that okay once you put pen to paper you're the copyright owner to that so mm -hmm. that's technically how copyright ownership works yeah gotcha. you can register your cop is it copywritten copyrighted work with mm -hmm. the copyright.gov you can go further and add more layer of protection by doing that but you turning this on you're going to be the copyright owner of that okay that, that's technically how it works so what you're saying here isn't necessarily something you can protect. Gotcha. You can protect the brand around it. Gotcha. And um, like, because you and her clicked all this stuff on, technically you're the copyright owners of mm -hmm. it, right? But if you had a videographer in here and he he turned on his video- Without documentation, they own it. That is his copyright. Gotcha. And you're gonna have to get a copyright assignment agreement from them to say, hey, I want the copyrights, or you give them you know, a service provider agreement, letting mm -hmm. them know that yes, you are my videographer, but all the copyrights that we make in here today are owned by you. Yeah. So um, that's just something to think about okay. with all the you know vendors and independent contractors you work with, mm -hmm. um, giving them contracts to know like yes, you are working for me, and any work you do for me, I own it. You okay. do not own it. I do. You you own no copyrights in this transaction. Mm -hmm. So that's something important to think about for podcasting. Love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. Enough about me and, and my fellow podcasters. <laughs> uh, more about your story. So talked about earlier, serial entrepreneur, and yes. you actually have a coffee shop and then you also are working on another, um, I want to say spirits, but it's, it's technically spirits. Yeah, it is. So, okay. Um, aside from my law firm, um, this, I started a nonprofit and this mm -hmm. is like a extension from my law firm. Every day I'm meeting creatives, I'm meeting entrepreneurs. You know, some of them are well established, some of them are just getting started, and then some of them just like barely, I want to do this, but I just don't have the resources. So that's kind of how my nonprofit started. And I'm very early on in the nonprofit, and I don't know if y'all know about nonprofit worlds. It is intense. Very so very. I'm I'm really learning my way, but yeah, it was an extension of that. Like um Basically, I would like to throw business showers for entrepreneurs. Fire. Right? Fire. Under, the underfunded, the under-resourced. I'm meeting them every day. I know they're out there. And I, I know they have the ideas. They just, you know, don't have the backing behind them. So mm -hmm. that is how my nonprofit is called Gift Biz. Mm -hmm. And we will be throwing in-person and virtual business showers for mm -hmm. business owners. Um, so that's one business. Funny enough, I actually yeah. had that idea back in like 2021. So if you don't mind, I'm going to trademark everything you just said right well, it's now. It's already I'm trademarked. Oh, okay. All right. But, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. But, but I mean, listen, let's like partner on no, something. No, that's, that's what I was going to say. So I, would, I, say I, I would love to, you because know. Because you're doing the work. So please let me know yeah. how we can be able to support that. Because I would I love, love to that. be I mean, able honestly, to Honestly, how I thought of the idea, it was one summer. Was it 2021? I don't even remember. I had three weddings to go to and two baby showers. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting up there looking at wedding gifts to give. I was looking at baby shower gifts. And I was in a co-working space like this in Georgia. I didn't have no furniture. I didn't have anything. I'm right. like just literally me and my laptop. And I'm like, these heifers <laughs> need to help me with my business. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
uh, I'm buying them all this stuff for getting married, having mm-hmm. kids. Why, why, why? Okay, well, this is my baby. Yeah. And I wish someone would shower me yeah. with some gifts. So that's literally how I came back. I, literally out of spite, honestly. I was upset mm. and spending money on other people. Um, that probably sounds so bitter, but that is how bitter. No, that's real. That's, that's real. That's entrepreneurship for sure. That's how <laughs> I was like, um, I just want to make starting a business like a milestone, like everything else is. Yeah. I feel like entrepreneurship is is just a part of everyday life now. Like it's not a just unheard concept. I feel like it is a milestone. Like you start a business, you have a baby, you get married, right. you buy a house. I just feel like it's a part of that now. And yeah. I would, I want to put it in that gift giving culture. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I would love to collaborate on some Let's stuff. We'll it. talk about that later. Let's do uh, it. So yeah, nonprofit gift biz. And then for the last year, I've been working on a zero proof spirits brand. Mm-hmm. Technically, you can still call it a spirit because I am making a tequila in a vodka. It just has no alcohol in it okay um now this came about um i have crohn's i don't know if any of you familiar with crohn's I'm familiar. yeah yeah so mm-hmm. i i was diagnosed almost 11 years ago and um it was really tough at first like because it, first of all people our age are just not getting crohn's so it's already like a new concept just for our age so it was tough in the get in the beginning and then i really figured it out and then I got on like my little health journey, my little health kick. And because of that, because of like the gut and the digestive issues, I just didn't drink. But I was never like a heavy drinker. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. It was not for me. (laughs) Even before I started having gut issues, I just couldn't handle liquor. Um, But that is why I wanted to come out with this Zero Proof Spirits brand because it's like, I know tons of people have gut issues and people who don't even know they have gut issues. Probably got gut issues. Probably got gut issues. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, yes, it is a product, but I kind of wanted to act as like an information tool. Mm -hmm. I feel like black and brown people, they're just really not educating us on gut health. And I feel like it is so important. They always tell us like, we got diabetes, we got high blood pressure, we got this. They did not talk to us about our gut. And I had to educate myself and it was in the worst circumstance. Like I had to figure out what it was after I already had it. I had never even heard of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, Mm -hmm. IBS. I had never heard of all that stuff. Um, And it happened right after I graduated law school. And I actually had to put off studying for the bar a couple of times because I just kept getting sick. So yes, it's a product that I'm putting out, but I really wanted to act as like, I don't, an educational tool. I don't really know how else to describe it. Like um, on top of it being Zero Proof Spirits brand, I'm also putting uh, prebiotics in it. So nice. it will really like enhance your gut health. But um, I just wanted a social drink, like people to come together, community, and like, let's talk about our gut. Mm-hmm. Like, let's not make it taboo. Like it's it's very important. I, I feel like it's the core to all of our health. Um, it affects our mind. It, it affects literally everything. Yeah. So inflammation, all that stuff, it's all coming from your gut. So even though it is a spirits brand and, you know, it, it feels like a liquor, so you just automatically think of party and all that stuff. And yes, you could do all that stuff with my liquor. Mm-hmm. You can still have a good time without having alcohol. Yeah. But um, this is more so like, I want to start the conversation about gut health and we're just going to have a nice drink to do that mm-hmm. um, instead of the mocktail being full of fruit fruity juices and sugar because yeah. you ask them for a mocktail they're just going to throw some juices in there right and a lot of people aren't carrying an actual spirit brand that don't have alcohol in it so mm-hmm. hopefully that is where my brand comes in it's called fine line it should be launching next summer nice. and i i want it like i want it very detroit centric like i want this to be a detroit brand mm-hmm. um i don't I'm still figuring out the branding and concepting for that, but I do. I wanted this to be like, this is Detroit's Zero Proof Spirits brand. Love it. So that's the plan for that. And what, what else I have? Uh, the coffee shop. Yes. <laughs> coffee shop. 
Um, the coffee shop is really my mom's baby. Uh-huh. Uh, I just got dragged along because I'm her child and I have to help her. Junior. Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm very proud of her and I'm so glad she didn't listen to me and she went forward with the coffee shop. I actually, I'm very proud of it um, just because on this particular block, my mom has daycares too. So mm. she's had daycares for over 20 years. So we know everybody over there. Right. It's We're all a family. We all know each other. And her opening up this coffee shop, like they're just so excited it's there. And it's, it's very cute in there. It's a vibe. So mm. people come in there and work. And, you know, we have like community meetings. They have their um, just... Uh, I forget what you call them, like neighborhood watch yes. meeting. Yeah. So it's just very nice to be there. And um, yeah. And what's the name the of it? Detroit Brutiful Coffee House um, on Plymouth between Burr Road and Emory. And um, as of right now, that is it. I can't handle any more <laughs> businesses. Um, but I, I'm feeling really good where I am with my businesses. I feel mm-hmm. like they all kind of correlate. They all go together. And um, I'm just excited to get them really going because two of these businesses are still kind of in the planning process. Yeah. Um, but I, I really want Gift Biz to excel here. Yeah. I'm, I'm obviously going to start here in Detroit as far as the entrepreneurs that I want to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as Fine Line, I, of course, I want it to be like an international brand, but I want it to be local for, you know, of for course. as long as I can and like yeah. really take over my city mm-hmm. um, and just show them like we have other stuff like we're not all drinking Casamigos and right. Hennessy you know like <laughs> we have an elevated palate and yeah. you know we do other things like we're very I feel like Detroit people are like the most vast in like personality I feel like you could put a Detroit person anywhere and you they're can. gonna get along yes, with everybody absolutely. like we're gonna vibe I've seen it I've, I've been a part of it. I've been that person <laughs> yeah we're gonna vibe <laughs> wherever you put us right. so I just you know just showing another side of who we are and we're very multi-dimensional people i mm-hmm. feel like um so yeah that's all my businesses <laughs> dope dope so beverly you gave us a ton of great information here today and your background experience is truly amazing i want to know where can the people tap in with you if they want to check you out they want to get some league leads advice they want to come <laughs> come check you out well, they i wanna... have a million social media pages i will not tell y'all to follow them all just Follow Beverly A. Bill. Get in contact with me there. Um, I'm actually pretty good with staying up with my DMs. And if mm-hmm. I'm not, my assistant stays on top of my head to make sure that I do. Um, but yeah, there, um, my law firm website is Beverly Bill Law. Bill is B-E-A-L. And um, giftbiz.org. That's pretty much it. And then, like I said, we're we're in Detroit, the coffee shop. I'm usually there. Sometimes I'm working there or sometimes mm-hmm. I am working, working there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got you. <laughs> so, <laughs> just depends on which day you come. But yeah, um, I'm pretty like vocal i i'm not one of those influencers who pretend like they don't see your stuff because i'm mm. too busy i am too busy but i really do try to like respond and, for sure. and answer people's questions if i can for sure yeah well i'm definitely pulling up to the coffee shop and like i said yeah. like i said for gift biz and then also the the non spears brand keep us up to date yes. about that as well because we'd love to be able to to try and be a part of the detroit branding of it all uh so if you that. need me to yeah, I need a reason to buy some cardies anyway. So right. let me know if you need me for a shoot, and uh, you know we can we can work out a contract. Oh no, or something. I'm definitely <laughs> getting. Uh, I'm making everyone like be models and have a fake party and yeah. do a whole photo shoot. So no, you're definitely getting. All right, say less. <laughs> <laughs> say less. Well, we appreciate you pulling up to the podcast today, yes. and everybody listening and watching. We're gonna tap in with y'all soon. Make sure y'all check out previous episodes as well and catch up on the podcast. Peace.